In these uncertain times, the Check Please Bay Area team encourages you to check in with each other, to support local businesses even as we shelter in place. We can think hopefully of a future when we can dine together again. Let's celebrate these businesses together through this episode recorded earlier this year. Just moi. <laughs> My absolute all-time favorite dish, probably ever. It reminded me of this kale that my mom cooks, but mm -hmm. better. But Sorry, better. mom. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... At Redwood Credit Union, we help people achieve their financial goals together, offering customized full-service personal and business banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Redwood Credit Union. Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com. The national recognition for healthcare equality. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area diners review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Here's how it works. We've invited three guests. Each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, a special treat. Some very hungry tweens are here at the Check Please table. Now, Clara is an Irish dancer who carbo loads on pasta at her cozy Berkeley Osteria. And Bella is a basketball champ who thinks the creamy curries at her Cordobadera spot are always a slam dunk. But first, we've got a budding rocker in our midst. Toby writes music, sings, and plays bass guitar for two different bands. His Cupertino restaurant pick is just as creative. Featuring a mind-boggling array of Japanese delights served by high-speed conveyor belt, it's Kura Revolving Sushi. The name Kura meaning a warehouse. Where you store invaluable items. We want customers to wonder what is inside the store. And to have a fun and exciting experience. My name is Ismael Amaya, a store manager from Kura Revolving Sushi Bar in Cupertino. We serve sushi in a small portion for affordable price. All the recipes is coming from Japan. Our system is very fast, so if you don't want to wait, just pick the food from the bell, the food is ready. If you prefer, you can order from the iPad right away when the food is ready in the kitchen. We send it through to the table. It's always fresh. And nothing is more important to sushi than the rice and the vinegar. We evaluated over a hundred varieties of rice before we selected the perfect one to mix with our secret vinegar recipe. All the machine in the kitchen, you just have to press a button and the machine is give you the portion of the rice with the perfect size and beautiful. I think the best customer that we have is the kid. Usually kid is the one order for the parents. When they come in, they just sit and they don't wait like for the server. They try to grab the plate, but they grab the whole Mr. Fresh with them. And sometimes it's like a little bit mess, but you know, it's part of the fun. <laughs> All right, Toby, so is it the conveyor belt that kind of gets you every time you go to Kura? What is your favorite part of going uh, there? Probably my favorite part is just the atmosphere. It's a very kid-friendly environment. Um, so I've been to other sushi boat restaurants, but the thing with those is it's kind of hard and unwieldy to grab the sushi. Right. And also, you have to wait for what you want to come around. But at this place, you have a little iPad that you can order directly from, and it comes on a more quickly moving conveyor belt that zips straight to your table. Um, do you usually wait the long line? I usually put in our reservation through the app, 
and then we wait at our house and check on it and see how many people are up in front of us. And once it gets down to around 10 people in front of us, we will leave the house and go to the restaurant. It's convenient. Did you have a line when you went? We were very lucky. We, um, we actually used the app as well. And, <laughs> but when we got there and the minute we stepped at the door, they said our number. So we were very That's lucky. That's incredibly lucky. Yeah. yeah. Um, we had somebody there to take us to our seat and introduce us to the system, which was really helpful because it was new to us. So. Right. I also really love the food that they have there because it's pretty high quality sushi for the price and you're not really restrained by your parents. You can just get as much as you want. <laughs> yeah. What is one of the favorite things that you like to start off with? One of my favorite things is the ikura, which is salmon roe with a seaweed wrapped around it. It also has a little cucumber, but the salmon roe, uh, it kind of bursts in your mouth like bubbles and it's really nice. And I really like the tonkatsu ramen. The noodles are kind of firm and they're not too soft or too hard. Okay and then the broth is also very hearty and satisfying. And the fat of the pork mixed with the meat, it kind of all melts in your mouth. Oh. I ordered the miso ramen. Mm -hmm. It was really good. I agree that the noodles are the perfect consistency and texture, and the flavors of the soup were really delicious because it had um, eggs and pork, and it's all really good. So how many dishes did you order total? Do you remember? Yes, I do. How many? I think maybe 21. 21? Yeah, we just ordered so much sushi. And you were with a group, right? Yes. Okay. One of my favorite rolls that we got there was a Texan roll, which had this crunchy stuff on top, and it had this really sweet sauce. It was just so good, and I just loved the texture, and I just, moi. <laughs> yeah, I actually had the Texan roll as well. It was really delicious. Like you said, I really like the balance of the textures with the crunch and this cool kind of spicy sweet sauce. I think that was my favorite sushi actually. And when it came down to the rice, it was really nice and sticky. It was definitely well cooked because I've been to places where the rice is too underdone and right. that really gets to me. So the right. fact that they, even the rice was just on point. Yeah, well they like to have fun there, don't they? Before mm -hmm. we talk a little bit more about food, talk about the prizes. So you put your own plates into the slot and every five plates that go in, an animation pops up. Yeah, ours was a guy fighting a monster um. and I thought it was really cool and you had to like help him like not get eaten by the monster. Right. Um, but once you reach 15 plates, they give you a little ball and it has a small toy inside. Oh, that's great. Well, you, you had 21 plates, so <laughs> you must have gotten a prize. We only got one prize, sadly, <laughs> and I don't think we had room for nine more plates. <laughs> <laughs> and did you guys, you had so much food. Is there any other dishes you had before we talk about dessert? Um, I had the scallop carpaccio, which is four s pieces of scallop, and it's marinated in, I think, some sort of soy sauce. Okay. The jalapeno kind of added a nice kick to it. Um, and it's really nice because I love raw scallops, but it's kind of hard to come by. And then when you do find it, it's pretty pricey. But here it's pretty cheap. And also it was really delicious. Okay. I also tried the shrimp tempura, which was a really nice flaky crust over deep fried shrimp. And we finished it quickly. It was very good. Mm -hmm. And we ordered the gyoza dumplings, which are pretty much deep fried pot stickers. Mm -hmm. These were hot and ready, and it was really enjoyable because the conveyor belt will come out really quickly, and it's just a really fun experience. We also got the gyoza, and yeah, it was super cool because we were right next to the kitchen, so it just came straight to us. Okay, dessert. Who wants to start? <laughs> Please, me, me, go. Okay, well, this is the best thing I've ever had, I think. It was like this soy donut that has this honey sauce on top and they were light and they were fluffy and they were airy and you took a bite of them and you're just like, mm, this is so good. You wanted to take them home. Yes. <laughs> I just wanted to have like a big pile of them in my room. I should have gotten this because unfortunately my dessert was not my favorite. Um, I tried the mochi ice cream, but I'm not going to blame it on the restaurant because I know that's kind of a universal dessert so see you need to go and you guys need yes, to eat I think her favorite I should dessert, try the soy right? they sound great <laughs> huh? yeah. is it do you always get dessert or uh not always but when I do I get the taiyaki with ice cream it's kind of a fried fish pancake oh. that has red bean paste inside of it and it has a small scoop of vanilla ice cream with it uh, which is really nice because it's fried and it's very heavy yeah. but the vanilla ice cream kind of cuts through all the oil all right, Toby, your spot. Give us a quick summary. Overall, Kura is a great place to go that is cheap and affordable if you're craving sushi.
Okay, and Bella? Um, Kura is a nice sushi bar where you can have really good sushi with really good service. Okay, and Clara? The price is right at Kura Sushi Bar and the sushi is delicious. If you would like to try Kura Revolving Sushi, it's on Valco Parkway in Cupertino. It's open every day for lunch and dinner and the average tab per person is around $25. Each time Clara and her family step into their favorite Berkeley restaurant, it feels like home away from home. From vintage portraits lining the walls to Sicilian recipes passed down through generations, she and her dad can rediscover their Italian roots at Agrodolce Osteria. <laughs> Hey guys, I need you to cook the and the table 27th. translates literally sweet and sour. It's the type of cooking we do in Sicily. We have a lot of dishes that have sugar and vinegar combined, but it also kind of describes Sicilians in a way. Gentlemen, so far so good. We're very nice, but at the same time, we're very bitter and don't cross us. So basically the experience I want to replicate is the same one I grew up in. I grew up in Palermo, Sicily, and over there, when you go to eat, you're going to be sitting for two or three hours. Everybody eating and then taking a break and then eating again and then cooking together and enjoying each other's company. Most of our recipes are from my grandmother's kitchen. She passed away before I was born, but she did teach my mother how to cook very well. And uh, I've never gone to culinary school. My teacher, my, my master is my mother. Lots of dishes in Sicilian cooking have saffron, uh, pine nuts, currants, sardines, anchovies, a lot of what Americans call bait fish. We turn into lovely tomato-based pasta sauces. But our food is based on what's available. I mean, traditionally, Sicilians are poor. Uh, it's the definition of farm to table, Wh whether you like it or not. <laughs> it's what's available. La mia pupa. <laughs> This is her first car when she was uh, when she was 16 years old. All my cars we buy new car one, two, and three. Every picture in this restaurant is of my mother when she was a child with my my family, my uncles, my grandparents. Another thing I take from my youth, when all the kids would get together, my mom, my dad, my uncles, my aunts, they'd get us out of the way with the food first, so they can have fun later. So as soon as kids come in we immediately serve them uh, like a pasta butter and cheese with a meatball or we tend to have a veal ragu in the back that kids like a lot. It gives the warmth of a Sicilian family that a lot of people, I think they yearn for it. But they hear stories and they want to live that experience. I lived it and I'm just trying to make my customers uh, understand it and enjoy it as well. Buon appetito da dolce. Your restaurant allows people to go and take a little trip to Sicily. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and you have Italian roots. Your family's from Italy. Yes. And this restaurant is really special because we've been there so much since I was very little. So it's very family oriented. The pictures are beautiful, the experience, the ambiance, and especially the food. Right. And my favorite part is that up on the brick wall they have an old Italian movie playing. And that really just sets the tone of the restaurant. Right. Did you see the movie? Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you start with when you get there? Well, we know we're going to be in for a long night, so we <laughs> start with the salad. Um, it's super nice, really fresh, and he uses just plain arugula, but he dresses the flavors with really nice lemon, Meyer lemon, which I always think adds nice flavor to the salad. Mm -hmm. I also get the pacchetti con polpette, mm -hmm. which is the spaghetti and meatballs, yeah. but it's original to him. I never really see it anywhere else. Mm -hmm. He makes it himself. Chef Angelo? Yes. Mm -hmm. Really nice. I love basil. And a big component in a good meal for me is it coming out hot. So it came out hot and it was just steaming and mm -hmm. the portions are nice and right. large. So, so what did you have, Toby, when you started? Uh, when I started with my family, I had the sweet and savory eggplant and my mom mm -hmm. and I really loved it because it kind of gave a nice change to what we normally had on a daily basis right. and it was just all around a really great dish. Well and that's what the name means, agrodote, right? Sweet and sour. Yeah, sweet and sour. What did you have when you started your adventure? Um, so my family has been to Italy and so when we walked in the door we felt like we were back in Italy and it was just dressed up with all these cool Italy features. Mm -hmm. um, but we started with 
this fried eggplant that was stuffed with cheese and topped with marinara sauce. And it was crispy and I loved it. What other dish did you have? Um, for the main course, um, we had the ragu and that was the best pasta I have ever had in my life. Yeah. It had these chunks of ribs in it mm. and the meat was tender and was flavorful. Right. The pasta was chewy and everything was on point with that dish. A little al dente. Yes. <laughs> I love the ragu. It's probably my second favorite. It's so good. And the meat, so tender and it's like perfectly cooked and it really blends in with the flavors. Did you have any pasta, Toby? I had the ravioli and it was super good and super creamy. Uh, I normally don't like mushrooms that much, mm -hmm. but I couldn't stop eating this even though I was super full. What else did you have? Um, I remember having a kale dish. Mm -hmm. It was really, really good. Uh, I didn't even let my dad have any. Oh, um, really? Was it like a salad or was it? It reminded me of this kale that my mom cooks, but mm -hmm. better. But Sorry, better. mom. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> um, but it was just really good and I ate, I think, two thirds of it. What about desserts? Mm. Ooh, so well, I'm okay. going to start with you, Bella. Okay. The first dessert we had was a chocolate bomba. Oh, yeah which is lava cake, which I love. It looked like a mini house. It had like its own decor. <laughs> it was yes. just so pretty. So it had like chocolate dripped on it and then it had a scoop of perfectly placed ice cream. Mm. Mm. And you slice it open. Ah! <laughs> yeah. It was just like really so like cool. it was singing. Yeah. Yes. So good. I could eat it every day yeah. and it'll just drip out slowly. It's so nice, so rich and creamy. Mm. And then my other favorite, is definitely the sorbetto di limone. That's a signature, isn't it? A One signature. Of their it's amazing. They have a fresh Meyer lemon that's been carved out, and they scoop the sorbet, and it kind of absorbs the flavor of the Meyer lemon, and it's so fresh, and it's cold, and it's... And it's a wonderful dish in Sicily. You yeah. see a lot of that, so... Yeah. I also had the uh, had sorbet, and it was probably my favorite thing of the entire night, because after I had just had the really creamy uh, ravioli, it kind of added a nice freshness to everything. Right. And it was a really unique way to serve it. All right, Clara, your restaurant, give us a quick summary. If you're craving a bite of delicious ravioli and sorbetto di limone, stop for a reasonable price at Agridolce. And Toby. Um, if you're looking for a place with a great environment, a great vibe, and great food, you should stop there, and that place is definitely for you. All right, and Bella. If you're looking for Italian food that will take you back to Italy, Agrodolce is for you. If you would like to try Agrodolce Osteria, it's on Shattuck Avenue in Berkeley. It's open every day for dinner, and the average dinner tab per person is around $40. Tucked away in a sleepy Marin neighborhood, Bella's pick is tiny and easy to miss. But as the saying goes, good things come in small packages. With a vibrant Asian fusion menu that pulls no punches when it comes to bold flavor, it's Burma Town in Corda Madeira. I grew up in Burma. So my childhood food is Burmese. You know, my mom had six kids. So all we do is home cook. I'm Jenny G. I'm the chef and owner at Burma Town, and it's my daughter. I'm Jennifer Fujitani. I'm the co-owner of my mom and the front of house manager here. We definitely wanted to showcase our Burmese roots and kind of honor, you know, my grandma, her mom's old recipes. For me, one of my favorite things that she used to cook was her pot stickers. Her folding is different than my folding because she just does the traditional folding and I love to do more prettier looks. Small pot stickers. It's fancy Jenny pot stickers. And of course I did the Asian fusion twist to the pot sticker and made a kimchi pot sticker. So I think what makes my mom's dishes special is that she just takes all these different flavors from Japan, from Korea, and even like California cuisine, you just know what kind of goes with what. 
there's no limitations yeah. and yeah. it works yeah. all the time. Like and we, yeah. Kids here at Burma Town love it. Yummy. Yeah. We've just gotten so popular. Um, the wait times can get up to an hour and a half. We put up a wait list and people can leave their name, their phone number, and they can walk away, they can go home. Otherwise, we have we, a glass of wine outside and, and just hang yeah. out. When people walk in, we want them to feel really cozy in here. A lot of our customers said it feels like home. So tell me about the food at Burma Town. What is it that you love? Oh, um, my love. <laughs> it's up there. <laughs> um, it's garlic barbecue pork noodles. It's the best thing on the menu. Okay. They're super good, super chewy, rich, and they're buttery with this little pieces of pork in there that have this sweet barbecue sauce and mixed together, it's heaven in a bowl. Oh. I tried the pork noodles as well. Um, the pork gave it a really nice flavor and my absolute all-time favorite dish probably ever actually was at Burma Town. It was, aside from Agra Dolce, but <laughs> it was the kimchi pot stickers. They were actually handed to us by the chef, which was really cool. They seemed like regular pot stickers, then you open them, the steam would come out, and the really nice kimchi, not too much of the vegetables, not too much of the pork, right. really nicely blended and so hot and nice flavor, and they would melt in your mouth. Did you have to wait in line? Um, it was about an hour, 45 minutes wait, okay. but I, it was really packed, and unfortunately it's so small for such good food right. um, that Did it's worth it. Did you have to wait it. too, Toby? Uh, me and my family actually really lucked out because we went as four people, and there was a couple who was sitting at a four-person table, but it was just two of them, and there was a two-person table right next to them. So the waiter went in and asked them to move over, so we got to sit down. Oh, so they got five stars yeah. for service. Wow. That's lucked out, That's yeah. exactly. Yeah. So you guys like kind of the atmosphere that you had and the, mm -hmm. the casual, even though it was small? Yeah. And like Agridolce, this is a family business. Yes, it is a mom and a daughter, yeah. and I think that's super cool. So, go girl power. <laughs> go girls, we love it. <laughs> yeah. What did you have, Toby? The first thing we had, I think, was the chili salad. And my parents were ordering it, and I was like, what was that? Because I'd never had it before. But they told me I would like it, so I tried it, and I ate half of it. Half of theirs. Well, tea leaf salad is a very famous Burmese cuisine dish and certainly one of the signature dishes at Burma Town, right? And they, they make their own fermented tea leaves, which is, is a rarity. I didn't actually have any of the tea leaf salad, but we started with the garlic um, green beans, actually. They were so good. And they came out just steaming hot, which, as I've mentioned before, I really... You um, like steaming hot. I like hot. steaming hot. And <laughs> just tons of the garlic and the nice spices, and they were really good. not soggy and not too underbaked. They were just perfect. My all-time favorite appetizer at Burma Town is this bao. Yeah. Bao, you can either have spicy shrimp or a sweet steak, which um, the bun is light and airy and it's fluffy and it melts in your mouth. And I usually get the steak one, and I think it's so good. Right. My favorite thing was the chicken curry noodles. Oh, yeah. I always liked that type of mm -hmm. noodles. Yeah. And I thought it was really cool because they mixed it at your table. Mm -hmm. So they had all the ingredients on top, and then they mixed it all together. And I thought it was creamy, the chicken was tender, and I just really liked it. Nice. Did you have anything else that you enjoyed? The baby back ribs. Oh. That was probably my second favorite thing there. Uh, the ribs were very crunchy on the outside, but once you got into them, they were really moist and tender. Uh, and then the noodles, they were good flavor-wise, but they were a little too gummy. Mm, okay. And I remember having a special, I think it was the mango salad, and it was really good. It was kind of a fresh flavor compared to all the different spices that they had mm -hmm. in the other dishes, which was a nice diversion. Yeah. Did you end with any dessert? I ended with the panna cotta, and it was really nice because it was very creamy, and I think it was a guava panna cotta, so it had a nice fruity flavor. We had this coconut cake, which was not my favorite texture because um, the coconut flakes were just in with the cake. Mm -hmm. I also had the cake uh, with the cherry ice cream, and mm -hmm. I thought it was really good. 
Um, normally, I don't like coconut that much, but uh, this time it was pretty good. All right, this is your restaurant, Bella. Give us a quick summary. If you want to try something new, Burma Town's for you, and it's worth the wait. <laughs> All right, and Toby? Uh, if you want to go to a cozy restaurant that has great food, definitely try Burma Town. All right, and Clara? For sizzling service and cuisine, stop at Burma Town for a bite of Burmese cuisine. It's really good. If you would like to try Burma Town, it's on Corte Madera Avenue in Corte Madera. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Saturday. It's closed on Sunday and Monday. And the average tab per person is around $30. I have to thank my wonderful guests on this week's show. Toby, who racks up the prizes with his hearty appetite at Cura Revolving Sushi in Cupertino. Clara, who shared her love of Sicilian specialties at Agrodolce Osteria in Berkeley. And Bella, who always kicks up the heat in her noodles at Burma Town in Corte Madera. So join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Everybody in. Woo! Yay, you guys are great. We really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about. So keep in touch with us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants we visited today. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was started when I was a child with my grandmother doing fresh pasta. And now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check Please Bay Area. It's the national recognition for healthcare equality. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com. Total Wine and More offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine and More now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. At Redwood Credit Union, we help people achieve their financial goals together, offering customized full service personal and business banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Redwood Credit Union. Toby, what is the craziest thing you've ever eaten? It was probably kangaroo. Mmm, I've eaten it too. Yeah, it's it's like chicken. Yeah, <laughs> but tougher. Yeah, right. it's gamey chicken. Alligator. You've eaten alligator? Yeah, it's not as much the the taste as more of what am I eating? Right. <laughs> it was very thrilling. <laughs> or kind of creepy. Yeah, One or the right. other, right? Yeah.